What is up everybody? This is your guy Kali and welcome back to Budget Tubing. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at the Toner TC20 XLR Condenser Microphone Kit. This is the latest kit of its kind from Toner as of the recording of this video and it comes in at around $60 on Amazon. And this kit does things a little bit differently from some of the other kits that I've reviewed previously. And because the easiest way to demonstrate that is to show you, let's go ahead and get everything out of the box. In this kit, you receive the microphone itself, a shock mount, an XLR cable, a boom arm, four toner branded hook and loop cable ties, a pop filter, and a wind puff. Now, while the microphone is the star of the show, I want to take a second to talk about the boom arm included in this kit, because it's quite a bit different from the boom arms included in all of the other kits I've reviewed so far. Here's one of those boom arms now. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this design. It has a nice desk clamp, it has a smooth action on the arm, and it has a 3 8 of an inch connector. And, well, this one also has all of those features, but they've been kicked up a notch. One of the key differences is the design of this back portion here. On the original model, you just have two pieces of metal, and on this model, you have three pieces of metal. A bit more support in this region. In fact, because of that, this boom arm can hold quite a bit more than the previous model. I know at one point Toner was selling this boom arm by itself under the name of the T20, and if I'm not mistaken, they claim that it can hold three Blue Yetis. And while I do technically have three Blue Yetis, I only tested it with one. And despite being left in place for over 24 hours, the boom arm did not shift position. The same cannot be said for some of the boom arms I've tested previously. However, my favorite difference between these two boom arm models is actually the desk clamp. Because while they are very similar, being a C-bracket, Toner went above and beyond and made this thing a bit beefier. Not only do we have a wider branded base, but they have a little bit of extra metal here. And this is meant to act as a headphone holder. I just really like that kind of design. With all of that nerding out over the boom arm out of the way, let's talk about the TC20 microphone itself. Unlike the microphones included in most of the other kits that I've reviewed, this one is analog. The other ones I reviewed have typically been USB. And the TC20 microphone uses the same body construction as the BM700, at least to a certain degree. And that makes sense due to the fact that the BM700 and the BM800 are two microphones that are licensed out to pretty much every microphone manufacturer under the sun. And I seem to recall that even Toner has had a BM700 kit available in the past. But I should point out that all of these similarities seem to be simply aesthetic. I say seem to be because while I can disassemble the BM700 no problem, the same cannot be said for the TC20. This is a pretty solid piece. However, there is one key difference between these microphones that makes me think they're not the same on the inside. And that is this cable right here. Now, while what's on camera makes it look like a standard XLR cable, it is anything but. Because right here, what we have is a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which is technically all you need to run the BM700, BM800, and other similar microphones. As long as the audio jack you're plugging that microphone into outputs at least 1.5 to 2 volts of power, you can use this mic just fine. However, if you do want to improve your audio quality with the BM700 and BM800, it is a good idea to get a proper XLR cable and run it through some kind of pre-amplifier, phantom power supply, or something similar. However, with the TC20, it's not that simple. With this microphone, phantom power is mandatory. And for those who have no idea what I mean when I say phantom power, it's 48 volts of power that are run into the microphone in order to make it work. This is typically achieved using power supplies like this one here, where you plug the microphone in here and then get the audio out this way to run into your audio interface. And it can also be supplied by many of the audio mixers out there, like these lower cost USB models. Now, as for the specs of the TC20, 
It has a cardioid pickup pattern, a frequency response between 20 Hz and 20 kHz, sensitivity at negative 45 decibels plus or minus 3 decibels, an output impedance of 2.2 kilo ohms, a signal to noise ratio of 94 decibels, and a capsule size of 16 millimeters. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm really glad they mentioned that in the manual because there are a few microphones that I bought for reviews in the past that didn't mention that, and despite having the exact same look as this one and being XLR, they decided to slip in a tiny 10mm capsule that looks a lot like this one. It doesn't exactly deliver the same quality of audio, despite the price tag they put on it. The microphone in question there is the newer NW7000, which if I'm not mistaken, it has since been discontinued. Of course, throwing all of these numbers at you probably doesn't mean anything, so let's get to the audio test. All right, to start these audio samples off, I'm recording using the Niwer NW7000 and the very same mixer that I've been making all of my videos with for a while now. I was going to start this section off by plugging the NW7000 into my laptop's audio card, but that sounds a little something like... Turns out the NW7000 is actually a lot more power hungry than I remember, which makes the fact that they went with a 10 millimeter capsule all the more annoying to me. I'm currently about four or so inches away from the microphone, and if I were to go back about a foot, I'd sound like this. Fortunately, I've not gone anywhere near maxing out the settings on my mixer, so I've got a ton of wiggle room when it comes to raising the volume here. However, it's exactly where I want it to be if I'm going to be using the proximity effect. Now I've switched over to the BM700 being captured using my laptop's built-in sound card, and while it is quite a bit quieter than what you're going to be hearing coming from the mixer, it's nowhere near as bad as the NW7000. And now I have the BM700 plugged into my mixer, and as you can probably tell, not only is it a bit louder, but it also just straight up sounds better. Once again, I'm starting off at about four inches from the microphone in order to take advantage of the proximity effect, but I still don't sound half bad when I'm about a foot away. That is the power of phantom power. And now I'm finally on the TC20. It goes without saying that I'm currently plugged into my mixer using phantom power because, as I mentioned before, this microphone is not compatible with the XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable going into a computer's sound card. I'm starting out at four inches away from the microphone, and here I am about a foot away from the microphone. And let's round things out with the Audio-Technica AT2020, because this is one of the most popular XLR microphones for YouTube, and it's actually twice the price of the TC20 kit altogether. So you're just getting the AT2020 microphone for around $100 to $120, depending on where you get it. Of course, sometimes sellers will offer a bundle with a boom arm and a few other accessories, but that's going to cost you quite a bit more. Once again, I am at four inches away from the microphone, but if I move back a foot, this is how I'm going to sound. Now that I've thrown all of these audio samples at you, let's go ahead and wrap things up. And there you have it. Now, I do want to point out that I did have to turn my mixer up a little bit for the TC20, but that does make sense due to the fact that phantom power is mandatory for running this microphone, whereas it's just optional with these two. And therefore, it is a bit more power hungry. Also, when comparing the audio between the Toner TC20 and the other two, it definitely seems like the audio profile is closer to the BM700 as opposed to the NW7000, which does make me think it has a 16 millimeter capsule. As you can see, the BM700 does indeed have a 16 millimeter capsule, whereas the NW7000 only has a 10 millimeter. Though I will give them credit, they did go out of their way to source a capsule holder specifically for that size, at least for the XLR model. The USB model is even cheekier because they used this kind of capsule holder, and it even looks like that size of a microphone capsule, but if you look close enough, you can see one of these hiding inside the body of that, and that's just kind of shady. And this is the part where I will probably never be given a newer item to feature in a video. Of course, while the capsule is indeed the same size as the BM700, it did sound quite a bit different, especially when it came to the signal-to-noise ratio. I did have a little bit of background noise that I could hear on the BM700, but not so much on the TC20. 
it also just sounded richer. I was also really surprised that it sounded a bit warmer than the AT2020 that made a surprise appearance at the end there when I was up close to the microphone using the proximity effect. Of course, not everybody likes the proximity effect due to the fact that there are just applications where you don't want or need that extra warmth. So keep that in mind when sourcing microphones. As for my opinion about this kit, do I think it's worth the $60? Yeah, actually I do. Not only does the microphone sound pretty dang decent for the price point, but the boom arm included is a big improvement over previous models. Now, some people might not like the fact that this kit does not include a phantom power supply, and that's perfectly valid. But keep in mind that most phantom power microphones also don't come with a power supply, and they're not that expensive. This one set me back less than 20 on Amazon, and if I recall correctly, it wasn't even much more than 15. Might have actually been less than. I've had that for a while, so I don't exactly remember. Now, if you like what you heard, I'm going to go ahead and include an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. And on that note, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.